How's everybody doing? My name is Pastor Vernon from New City Church, Wilmington, Delaware, where Eric Spanier is senior pastor. As I'm reading all the many things that are going on, it seems as though if you wanted to get to the bottom of anything, it's to understand it. And that's what I'm going to be speaking about today, getting to know him. One of the first things in life is the bond between a parent and the child. It's been said that a mother can identify the cry of her child among all the other children that are crying. That's amazing to me. I, I was reading an article of the Emperor Penguins from Antarctica. And there's in the colonies are in the thousands. So when they go in to lay, the eggs and the, and the chicks hatch. Now the parents go out to find food. When they come back, can you imagine all of those penguins stacked in there together? They're able to find their baby. It's amazing to me. That's how God works though. And you later learn that knowing someone helps in relational things. That is when they're happy, you know about it. When they're sad, you know about it. When they're anxious, you know about it. When they're fearful, you know about it. Before Emma and I were married, we got to know each other, and after marriage, even more. We've been married for 51 years, and we're continually learning who we are. We were fortunate enough for God to gift us with four beautiful children. They all have different challenges that we as parents must get to know in order to be successful parents. One thing for sure is neither the youngest or the oldest are alike. All four are different. So what you do with one, you cannot do with the other. Each of them has to be handled a certain way. And then as we grow in things of God, we must be determined to know God even better. Today, we will use the lessons Elijah taught to his intern, Elisha. In the scripture, I think Paul says that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Andre Krauss so eloquently says, take me back to the place I first received. Take me back to the place I first believed. It's a place that you know, a place that you're familiar with. I remember when we went back home uh, and, and we went into the house where I lived as a child and the place looks like a small, one of my bedrooms in my house currently. And I'm saying like, wow, this place used to be so big, but there's something about knowing it. You feel so comfortable in knowing it. And we must endeavor to stay close to him as Elisha did with Elijah in 2 Kings. Elijah said to Elisha, ask what you shall, what I shall do for you before I'm taken away. And Elisha said, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And then Elijah said, you've asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I'm being taken from you, it shall be so. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. Now, imagine if someone challenges you like that. You're going to get double what I have if you see me leave. So the challenge was on and Elisha was on Elijah's trail. The first place they stopped was Gilgal. And as the uh, Israelites left Egypt, that was one of the first places they stopped. And what happened there is very, very important. They circumcised all of the men. Now, when they left, there was one generation when they went into the promised land, it was a brand new generation and they had not been circumcised. Now, circumcision is taking or cutting away 
the flesh. We must take the flesh and we must cut it away. You must be led by the spirit and say no to the flesh or your carnal nature. That's a hard thing to do. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 that the church, he's he's unable to address them in the spirit because they're in the flesh as infants. 1 Corinthians 15, he says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Romans 7 and 8 does an excellent job of showing the value of living in the spirit versus living in the flesh. It's very, very important that we get that flesh under control. The next stop was Bethel. Now, Jacob's heavenly vision he had was at Bethel and and his God who does concern himself with the things of earth. Not a God who shuts himself up in heaven, but a God who has a ladder fixed between heaven and earth. Now in Jacob's dream, there was now access to heaven. He now knew that God was closer than he thought before and there was real access and interaction between heaven and earth. We must have a vision. Unless we have a vision, you will drift aimlessly through life. Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain on paper. Even before Abraham was uh, left in Genesis chapter 15, verse one, he had a vision of where he was going to be going. You want to perish? Do you want to perish? Have no vision. You must have a vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, my people perish. We must have a vision. Our next stop was with Joshua and Elijah was Jericho. Now, Jericho, is we know about the, the, the walls of Jericho falling down, but prior to that, Joshua went and fell asleep. I, I guess he drew away uh, to pray or to think about his challenge that was coming uh, in front of him. But when he opened his eyes, a man was standing there with a drawn sword. Now, you have to understand, Joshua was challenged by God to be strong, be unafraid. And he was that. Joshua was a man's man. And so when that, when the, when the person come with a drawn sword, Joshua says to him, are you for us? or for the adversaries? Interesting question. Listen to the answer. And the, and he said, he said, no. Now, what kind of answer? That, it, that wasn't a yes or no question, but he answered no. But I'm the commander of the army of the Lord. And immediately Joshua fell on his face and worshiped and said to him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Now, what saith my Lord unto his servant? All right, first of all, who is this that Joshua encounters? There's a a few clues. He says he's the commander of the Lord. Joshua worships this this guy without even rebuking him which you're really not allowed to do that or worship or bow to an angel. And in chapter uh, six, verse two, he says he's referred to as the Lord. Who was this? Who was this? Now, theologians, they call it a theophany or an Old Testament pre-nativity appearance of God in human form. This, my friend, was Jesus He didn't come as someone to get onto our side or someone else. He comes as one to whom we must surrender. We must 
surrender. When God calls and you know it's God, surrender. The only, it's only when you surrender to God that you experience victory. It's only when you surrender to God that you experience victory. The next place that that um, we stopped was at the Jordan. Now, the Jordan is one of the most uh, prominent rivers in the country, and it flows downhill, but unfortunately, it dies because it dumps into the Dead Sea. And so we, as God's people, we must be prepared to attend our very own funeral every day, every day. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. We must die to ourselves. Now, Elisha and Elijah, they stopped at four, at the four stations of significance. Gilgad, say no to the flesh and yes to the spirit. They stopped at Bethel. We must have a vision and realize there is access to heaven. And when he stopped at Jericho, he says, we must surrender to God in order to be victorious. When they stopped at Jordan, we must die daily in order to live. Quite a lesson, and the reality is, as God's people, we must find a way to draw closer to God. Let us pray. Lord, we are scattered in our thinking, wondering, what shall I do? Remember that as we draw closer to him, he draws closer to us. As Elisha stay closer to Elijah, may we say no to the flesh and yes to the spirit. May we have a vision or visions and realize there is access to heaven. May we surrender to God in order to be victorious. May we die daily to ourselves in order to live. We thank and we praise you, and Lord, we ask that your blessing be all, on all of us, your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and have a great day.